plus try to subscribe share and like so as to get more of this video now today we are looking at a fluorescence the liquids and hygroscopic in chemistry as the name implies a fluorescence what is a fluorescence is a phenomenon on its own whereby a source or a substance when being exposed to the atmosphere it tends to lost out water crystallization or moisture and remain in an hydrous form because it was existing in a hydrated form and later now in an hydrous form. Such kind of salts, we describe them as a fluorescent salt. A fluorescent salt is what they are called. A fluorescent salt. The phenomena is called a fluorescence. Why the salt itself is called a fluorescence? They always lost water when being exposed to the atmosphere. Common examples of this sort are those salts that have water crystallization. We have magnesium sulfate 0.7H2O. We have iron sulfate 0.7H2O. We have copper sulfate 0.5H2O. We have sodium carbonate 0.10H2O. We have sodium sulfate. Sodium sulfate 0.10H2O. 10H2O. All these are known as what? Salt that are water crystallization. Common name like this is commonly known as Exxon salt. Exxon salt. This Exxon salt. Exxon salt. This is known as a vitro. That is a green vitro. It's an iron vitro or call it a green vitro based on the color. This is known as blue vitro. Blue vitro based on the color blue vitro it is bluish in color this is commonly known as washing soda why this is commonly known as what as global salt global salt now all these salts are salts that have water crystallization when exposed them to the atmosphere they will lose almost or part of their water crystallization to end up forming an, an hydrous form like example like this one now this one will lose what six molecules remaining just one this will lose six remaining one. This will lose four remaining what? One. This will lose nine. This lost nine two remaining just one. That's why we describe them as a fluorescent salt. And the next one here we call it deliquescence. Deliquescence is just like an opposite manner of a fluorescence. That is, a deliquescent salt or substance tends to what? Absorb or absorb moisture to form what? Solution. Now, as we have it as a case here now. The liquid substance is a substance when being exposed to the atmosphere. They will absorb, or the the word, they will gain. They will gain moisture. When they gain moisture, they will end up forming what? A solution. They end up forming a solution when they gain moisture. That is the liquid substance. Now, these substances are described to be what? Salt. Example, we have what? Sodium hydroxide. We have potassium hydroxide. We have phosphorus 5 oxide. We have silica gel. Silica gel is also part of what? Of this. We also have calcium chloride, magnesium chloride, and so on. All these are known as what? Salt. That when being exposed to the atmosphere, they will tend to what? Absorb moisture and form solution. They are also described as the liquid cell salts. The liquid cell salt because they exhibit what we call the liquid cells as a phenomenon. Now, like the last one here, we have it as hygroscopy. Hygroscopy is similar or close to the case of the liquid cells, but quite different. In the case of hygroscopy, the substance, when being exposed to the atmosphere, it will absorb moisture, but instead of its forming solution, it will end up becoming sticky or become just moist. Now, in this case, this will gain moisture, it will become what? Gain moisture and become sticky or become what? Moist. It will never form solution like the case of an hygroscopic substance. A common example of this is what we know as copper oxide, calcium oxide, and we also have potassium nitrate, we also have sodium nitrate. Then including H2SO4, that is sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid among them here is the only liquid form. All these other ones exist in a solid form, but this exists in a liquid form. That is to say, it's a liquid what hygroscopic substance or liquid hygroscopic substance. That is, it will absorb moisture and dilute itself three times its original volume. Now, 
All this substance I mentioned here, we describe them as hygroscopic substance. Hygroscopic substance. The exhibit what to call hygroscopy. Now, there's a last phenomenon that is somehow ambig ambiguous to students. That is not that clear. They have it as an issue. That is drying agent. Drying agent and dehydrating agent. Dehydrating dehydrating agent. Many students always confuse these two things. Now, the one that is unique about both of them is that they both tend to dry out moisture. They both tend to remove water. But how did they remove the water is what distinguished the two of them. Now, for the case of drying agents, a dry agent will dry a substance without affecting the physical properties. And it will dry that substance physically. The hydrating agent will dry the substance at the same time affect the physical parts of the substance. That's what another thing, the one thing that differentiates them. The another thing again that differentiates them is that dry agent will carry out what to call a physical change. But the hydrating agent will carry out what to call a chemical change. A common example of drying agents are all of the lipids and hygroscopic substance. They exhibit what? Dry, they act as drying agents. Or we can also call them desiccants. We can also call them desiccants. That is, since they have the ability to absorb moisture, they can be a good drying agent. The hydrating agent we have H2SO4. H2SO4 is a good example of what? The hydrating agent. But it's not a what? A drying agent. Why? Because if sulfuric acid is used to dry a substance, it will affect the physical properties. By so doing, we describe it as what? The hydrating agent are not a drying agent. Drying agents, as I said earlier, are all of the examples I listed here about which are what? The lipids and the hygroscopic. They are known as what? Drying agents. They have the ability to dry out moisture from a substance and also from a gas. Just as a sample, common example that is peculiar to your exam, like H2SO4, we say that can dry all gases except ammonia. Why? It can't dry ammonia because it will react with ammonia. But it will dry other substance moisture without reacting them. That's why it's a good drying agent for that substance. But in the case of ammonia, it will combine with it because ammonia will exist in alkali medium, white in acidic medium, they will achieve the product. That's why it cannot be used. But the best Drying agent that is used to dry what ammonia is known as what quick lime. We we'll call it quick lime or calcium oxide. Quick lime or calcium oxide. It can also be called burnt lime. Burnt lime. So this lime has the ability to dry specifically ammonia. Why? Because it does not react with ammonia other than to remove the moisture from ammonia. Now, a common mixture that can be used to dry eventually all gases and substances include the word known as what? The silica gel. Silica gel have a general property of drying almost what? Substance compared to what? Other deliquescent substance. Subscribe, share, and like in order to get more of this video. Thank you and God bless.